Hi, today I'm going to talk about our new release of M Calibration version 660. I'm going to divide the upgrades into three categories. I'm going to start by talking about load cases and changes to the load case scenario. So this is the brand new uh, uh, software that we have released. And um, the first thing I want to talk about is a new type of load case that's available. And that's under load case tab, there's something called graph data. Uh, if you just want to plot data for different experimental data that you have, um, then I recommend you use this graph data load case tab. You load in your file here, you specify which columns are what, and then you can specify the labels on the X and the Y axis. And these are plotted as generalized displacement and force back in the graph window. So that's a useful thing to do if you just want to uh, look at data quickly. We also have another update to the predefined load cases. So if you click on the plus V here, which is the predefined load cases, you see that the dialog box looks very different in this version. Um, first, we have in included one more in the predefined virtual test. And uh, here it has 10 virtual cycles. I click on this one, and you get 10 cycles with larger and larger strain amplitude. And if I just select the material model here, I can run this. You will see that it looks like larger and larger cycles like this. So that's a predefined uh, load case that's available for you. But there is another feature here that's really cool. So if you go to load cases, predefined load cases, you go to experimental data, you see that we're starting to allow um, uh, additional information specific for materials. So here we have predefined experimental data for some materials. And we're going to extend upon this later uh, in this year. So as an example, we have ABS here. Uh, PET and natural rubber. If you use ABS and you click OK, you get a number of load cases that contain experimental data for ABS in this case. You can then calibrate the material model to this generic data. You can calibrate any model that you like. Uh, so that's very interesting. We also have, um, so you see when you um, create these, it just adds them to the list that you have. So I'm going to show you the, the last one here, the Trialor natural rubber data, which is a good test case that I've been using in a lot of my training classes, showing how different material models compare to experimental data. So these are predefined now. You don't need to uh, search for the data. Some of these are starting to show up here as uh, experimental data that you can use. Um, another feature that's really interesting in the load case dialog is related to field variables. We have a, an area here you can specify a field variable. It's either uh, moisture, for example, or humidity that can influence the material model. So if you have a material model that, that depends on that as a field variable, you can specify that in this field here. And of the, the commonly used material parameters that are used, the material models that are used, um, the one that, that perhaps is most interesting here is the Silberstein Boys material model for um, uh, electrolyte membrane materials in fuel cells. And that is a material model that is uh, built in into uh, polyumod and M calibration. And it has a moisture dependence to it. So this is something you can then calibrate mm -hmm. to an additional field variable in addition to temperature. Um, so that's a new feature. Another new area that we're working a lot on is the material models. So if you go to the material models, we have restructured the material models that are available here a lot. And particularly in this release, we're focused on the abacus material models. Um, one of the big changes and improvements is that we now support PRF models uh, with plasticity. So we have a two network model here, Yo hyperelasticity with burst and burst flow and plasticity. And we have a three, ver um, three network version of it as well. So we select one of these. We can see uh, that the parameters look like this. We have the plasticity parameters at the bottom. To illustrate how this works, let me just create a virtual load case here. And that's going to do a unit constant uh, rate tension to 50% strain. Now run this one. You see the stress strain prediction may look like this. Uh, plasticity will occur now at 10 megapascals. We never reached that, so plasticity actually didn't occur in my example here. I can reduce this to 1.2, perhaps. And um, here you see how this sigma y0 starts to change the response, depending on the hardening that occurs and the hardening exponent. 
So the plasticity is incorporated in the same equation that's used by the Johnson Cook model in, in our implementation, it allows you to use a small number of parameters to activate plasticity. And this is, of course, useful uh, in cases where you want to tweak the, uh, the permanent set predictions in your PRF model. Uh, so this is available for both two and three network versions of the PRF model at this point. There are a number of other big changes in the material model dialogue here for Abacus. If you look at, we have a linear elastic with creep here, a number of creep equations that you can use. For the hyperelastic models, they, they've also been structured in what we think is a little bit more natural way. With hyperelasticity, we have another group of material models called hyperelastic plus mullins, and then hyperelastic plus viscoelastic um, has the, this structure. You can specify high number of plus, uh, viscoelastic prony series terms, and then if you want time temperature superposition, just activate that. And you can see now we support two types of uh, TTS, so time temperature superposition models, um, which are available in Abacus, the WLF and the Arrhenius. You can both, uh, you can calibrate both and you can use both uh, here and they're already implemented as internal solvers in M calibration. And that also applies to hyperfoam with viscoelastic. You can use both types of uh, time temperature superposition ideas for that. Um, another big change is for elastic plastic with isotropic hardening. Just like before, you can specify how many plasticity terms you want, but now we also have a checkbox here that you can say, use as many terms as the experimental data file has. So typically this, these parameters are obtained from a tension test that has a certain number of data points. You downsample that initially, in your data cleanup, and then you select this checkbox, and then you will have exact match to those data points. So that can be quite handy. And if you like, you can see now in the elastic plastic isotropic hardening, you can also include creep, all the different creep models, gives you a different type of rate dependent plasticity model uh, that's available now. There are two other changes that are uh, important here in um, when you work with the abacus material models, when you um, select an abacus solver in your load case, then what happens is that M calibration will now um, use um, that information and run it in a separate subdirectory instead of putting all the simulation files in the same directory. So we're cleaning up the, uh, some of these calculations a little bit as well. And the, the final change we have made is for many of these abacus material models, we have also started to automatically detect when a hybrid element is, is needed, which is, of course, the case when the, the bulk modulus is very high compared to the shear modulus. So we, many of the hyperelastic type models now have built in check and it turns on hybrid elements when needed. Um, and we will continue improving that for all the, the material models as we, we improve the software during the year. Finally, the, the last type of updates I want to talk about is related to um, sort of general improvements. Um, we have uh, improved how uh, the software saves predictions. So in previous versions, if you say save the predicted results in the MCAL file using this checkbox here, it saved a lot of information and it made the MCAL file relatively large and it took a little long to, to open a saved file that way. So I tended to not have that activated. In this new version, we don't save as much uh, information. It's, it's saved in a better way. So I tend to have this on at this point. So when I save a file, it saves the prediction. And when I open it up in some other time, I'll see the predictions right away. And then I don't have to rerun the, the calculations. Um, and that can be handy. And finally, uh, we have implemented a few more uh, information or, or settings for the graph window uh, when you want to save it. So when I work uh, and I create a a prediction, I typically want to save this into presentation, for example. So the way to do that, the way I do it at least, is to click on this icon here, save to save the image to a file or to a clipboard. And then I often use one of the predefined sizes. And we have two new sizes here, full HD and low res uh, size. And then you can either save it to the clipboard as, a, as a, an image, or you can save it to a file. And one thing that people don't know, perhaps, is that if you save it to file, you can also save it to uh, other web formats. So SVG is a very interesting uh, uh, format that you should, should look into because it's, it's not in a pixel-based, it's a vector-based format. And that can be kind of, kind of nice in certain uh, 
documents that you want to prepare. Or WebBP is another very good compression format that's used on the internet a lot. So, so take a look at those if you're interested. So those are the key features. Uh, for more information, you can check out our uh, polymerfm.com website and look under the change log, log uh, section, and that contains all the information there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them below.